for another weekly YouTube show, Quarantine Concerts. Um, I am very excited to welcome two Duluthians on this week's show, which is not actually that common. So, actually, I don't think I've done a whole bunch of that. So, I'm very excited. Um, today, the first guest I'm going to introduce is Anne Marie Genius, which is a very good name for an artist to be called a genius right out of the gates. It's just yeah. like, well, <laughs> it's what everyone dreams of, right? So, <laughs> um, so Anne is a chalk artist, but you're also stained glass. Do you want to introduce yourself to the oh, audience sure. a little bit? Hi, I'm an artist in Duluth. I do a lot of different mediums. Um, lately, a lot of chalk art and stained glass. Uh, I do a lot of illustrations. Uh, right now, one of my big projects is window painting for Duluth All Souls Night around town. Cool. Um, yeah. So how did how did you get into art? Like, have you been doing it your whole life? And yeah, I, I grew up with a father who's an art teacher and an artist himself. So oh, cool. It, yeah, you kind of just grow up and you keep doing different mediums because that's what you grow up doing when you live like that. So you just kind of like bounce around. Is there one that's been a constant your whole life? As an Probably adult? drawing. Drawing's been a pretty constant. That's it's cool. just you find different applications for it. It's like if you're in science and you're really good at math, there's so many applications. Yeah, yeah, so, no. Yeah. So for the art, were you gifted as a child? Is it something that you develop? Like, how does that work, do you think? My dad says that, like, all little kids, you give them a pencil and you tell them to draw a picture, and they'll draw a picture. And then at some point in their life, somebody tells them, that looks bad, and then they stop drawing. So. Yeah. Like, in theory, like, this has been going on my whole life. I just had a lot of encouragement. And then yeah. you just kind of keep studying, keep working at it. And you can tell even, like, over the course of the summer with my chalk art how much development's happened just because I'm doing it so often lately. Yeah. No, that's cool. So. And your art is really cool. So what we're going to do today for you is you're going to make a drawing based on one of my songs. Do you want to tell them what it's about? or? Sure. I kind of started it now, and you're going to finish it during the show. I did. You can see a little bit of it back there. Cool. Um, this is based on the song Bound by a Thread, which I just, I love your love songs. They're just so, they're a mature love that develops in time, and it, it recognizes that things change, and you're focusing on it, and you're working on it, and it's just, it's, for anybody in a long-term relationship, it's, totally a much better description of love than you just saw somebody and fell in love. Yeah, no, I actually <laughs> so this... hate most love songs for that exact reason. So Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're like, I guess like, maybe it's that easy for some people. Who knows? They would be so lucky. That'd be amazing. Yeah. But um, yeah, so I love this one because it talks about like your life is a book that your companion's here to help you fill in these empty pages and make a storyline. So I was thinking about like a storybook that's opened up and then you have this one line in there that I really loved that was maybe we'll see the fruit of our labors, maybe not now, maybe lifetimes ahead. Yeah. And so I was trying to picture like people being bound together, but in a future lifetime, which of course means drawing spacemen. Okay. I, so. that, at first I saw the outline of what you're working on and I was like, hmm, I wonder why there's an astronaut in there. But then it made it's the more future. Sense. It is the future. It probably is actually. So good point. Um, no, that's super but, neat, because that's exactly what that song was about. So it's cool that you were able to, uh, like, capture that in a one image. You know what I mean? That's pretty yeah. awesome. Yay. Well, I'm excited to see how it comes along. Um, people are saying that they, uh, that when they had, when they were younger, they had encouragement for drawing. But as it, they were older, they were told that it wouldn't be able to earn a living. Um so how do you earn a living, they want to know? Like, or, oh. or is it not really like that? I mean, you do a lot of art, so I imagine you do earn some money on it. But maybe I do a lot your... of art, but it's only been like the last couple of years that I've been making a little bit more. Um, yeah. I don't know. I think most artists, it's like if you can break even for the expenses on art, you feel like you've really accomplished something. Yeah. I'm definitely not making a living, but I'm also not pursuing it as aggressively as friends of mine who are. Yeah, and how are they doing it? They're just, like, showing at every possible gallery imaginable, or what? Yeah, yeah, and in chalk artists, there's a lot of traveling and going to different shows and selling your prints. There's a whole market for chalk art prints, which I didn't even really? know about. Yeah. Yeah, 
Well then. Um, have you done any of that? You know, I've only been doing chalk art for a couple summers. So this summer was the first summer I was going to go outside of Minnesota and Wisconsin. Oh. And I was really excited. <laughs> well, <laughs> and then, maybe yeah. not this time. Yeah. 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 Maybe another summer. <laughs> maybe another summer. I know. What a weird year it's been. And your husband's a doctor. So you've been like intimately involved with this yeah. coronavirus. How, is he doing okay? It's probably a pretty weird year for you guys. He's doing well. We um, self-quarantined for about four months. And then at that point, the community spread within Duluth had gotten extensive enough that we decided it was just as bad for me to go to the grocery store as to have him live with me. So he moved back in. <laughs> that makes sense. Oh, like self-quarantine. Like you didn't even live together. No, yeah. no. He had a he had a separate place. Wow. He'd come over in the daytime and then eat lunch and go home. Weird. Well, I'm glad you made it through that part of it. And yeah. just try to be safe, I'm sure, in your normal daily lives. Together. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. yeah. It's yeah, also it's gotten okay. more of a routine now. Now we all know to wash our hands for 20 minutes and put our masks on and, yeah. you know, yeah. shower as soon as you walk in the door and stuff. Yeah. No, I know. It's a, it is a, a lifestyle change, which I think in some ways it's probably good that we start being more vigilant anyways. I mean, I, I think about how gross I was pre-coronavirus. <laughs> And I'm like, it's a wonder we're all alive still. So I, I just look at pictures where there's a crowd scene, and I'm like, ah, we're too close together. I know, it's so weird. Well, I'm glad that you're doing art, uh, and it's a cool thing that you can do it outside. Um, it's today wonderful. Is beautiful today, so glad this worked out. Well, I'm going to switch over to um, Tony for now, and then okay. I will come back, and we can look at what you're drawing, how you're doing that then, and then I'll do some music while you draw. Is that cool? Sounds great. Sweet. See you in a little bit if I figure out how to switch over. I have not gotten skilled at that yet. Okay. Here he is. Hello, Tony. Hello, Galen. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Good. Good. Really good. Um, I am very excited for people to uh, be able to learn from you. You're one of the very first community organizers I met when I moved back to Duluth. I mean, I, I was thinking about it yesterday. I was like, wow, I've known Tony for a really long time, actually. Mm -hmm. Like, more long than I guess I realized until I thought about it. I know. I, it's Time goes by fast, and a lot has changed in both of our lives since we were working together. Galen used to just make phone calls for various campaigns and, and organizing projects we were working on together, and it was fun to get to know you then, and it's fun to see your career take off since then. Yeah, we're both, you have like several more children, well actually four more <laughs> children than when I yep. met you, and mm -hmm. you were doing Get Out the Vote, which I still think is extremely important this year, mm -hmm. cow. Mm -hmm. um, but now do you want to tell people a little bit about what you're doing in Duluth? Sure, well I work at the Zeitgeist Center for Arts and Community, and we are an arts and, and community development and social change organization, and, and basically our our objective is to um, get our community as sort of committed to these values of creativity, sustainability, and inclusivity as we can. And we try and embed it in in local public policy. We try and embed it in kind of social systems that, that drive our own, you know, individual priorities and, and ways of thinking. And we try and embed those values into organizations and institutions. And we do it in a lot of different ways. Yeah, you guys have your hands in a lot of different areas of Duluth community mm -hmm. engagement and stuff. And this week, the reason we are doing this um, in October is you just started a new month uh, called Bus Bike Walk, right? That's, That's right. Order. I get the order mm -hmm. wrong every time I say it. Um, and so you're talking about how to make Duluth like a more walkable city? Or what, what's your main objective with this event? This yeah. Long sure. So Bus Bike Walk Month is, you know, the name the name goes a long way uh, to explain it. Um, basically, it's it's trying to get people excited about and advance the ideas of multimodal transportation. So and that's important because um, not everybody drives and uh, cars are great. They're a great way of getting around. Uh, but we know that uh, for many families in Duluth, uh, who don't have access to cars, they need to get around by biking or walking or using the bus or other public transportation. And we also love those forms of transportation because they integrate exercise, they take carbon uh, out of the atmosphere, 
Um, so there's all sorts of great, uh, you know, advantages, community advantages to having a strong multimodal transportation system that uh, we want to talk about. Yeah, no, that's really cool. And our paths kind of intersect because I am obviously a passionate advocate for disability rights. And I think mm -hmm. a lot of times, as you know, because we've talked about it, um, people who don't drive for disability reasons um, mm -hmm. have a lot of trouble getting around, um, especially in a town like Duluth where there's a winter factor that's extreme. So what are some things that people in any city can do to be like a good neighbor um, to make sure that they are helping people who have access barriers get around and like not blocking them from independence, I guess? Yeah, well, in Duluth, you know, snow is one of the first things that comes to mind. Uh, and um, yeah, for for mobility challenges, uh, but for anyone who, again, uh, needs to get around in a way that isn't automobile centric, um, sidewalks need to be cleared, uh, curbs need to be cut uh, in such a way that people can get up and down easily. Um, and so that I think that snow clearing is a big one, but that just for us, you know, we've actually we've led policymakers and healthcare experts on uh, walking audits throughout the neighborhood. That's a good idea. So snow is a big one, but when you get down and, and you actually try and walk through a neighborhood, you start to notice and you pay attention to it. Um, you start to notice things that people in certain neighborhoods take for granted and and those same amenities for walking aren't necessarily sort of equally dispersed across every neighborhood in most communities in Duluth is the same way. And so, I mean, I often tell the story of one of the, the you know, main uh, thoroughfares of transportation and uh, how many families need to walk, how many kids need to cross that street to get to their school, for example. Yeah. It's a four lane, really fast street cut cuts the neighborhood right in half. The sidewalk is literally adjacent to the street. So if you ever slip off, you're right in a lane of traffic. Oh my gosh. You know, there's four block stretches where there's no way to cross safely at a light or at an intersection. Yeah. And it just, you know, uh, it it's no wonder why uh, those communities sometimes or people that live in the neighborhood have a hard time getting around. house we live in an apartment now but we lived in a house where we had two sides of the sidewalk mm -hmm. like, you know we were on the corner lot so we had two giant things and it is a big commitment to keep that clear but what you don't realize is there are people that um literally depend on that to get to work or to like get groceries and mm -hmm. it's just a really important thing to not to not be like, eh, it's just mostly college kids that live here or whatever, because you don't know who is, who really is using that out of necessity. You know what I mean? So. Well, right. We, you know, we use this stat a lot. It was surprising when we sort of found it ourselves. You know, there's, a, there's a neighborhood in Duluth that actually includes the street I was just talking about, the Hillside neighborhood, where over 30% of the families don't drive. Well, uh, yeah, that's a lot. And, and so, you know, you start to think about how they get access to food, to get to work, childcare, um, those other means of transportation become critically important for those families. And, and if they can't get to those things, then we can't have a successful community. You know, that's, that's just too many people that are, you know, have a hard time keeping a job, getting their kids where they need to be or getting fresh and healthy food. And, um, you know, and the other thing that we always try and remind folks is, Every time you make an improvement to a walking trail or a sidewalk or a bike trail, that improvement is, is good for everybody. Exactly. It, yeah. You know, it, it makes the city a higher quality of life place for everyone who gets to use it. That's shared public infrastructure. So, yeah. you know, we, we find that those investments actually pay for themselves in the economic development and increased connectivity that people have. And uh, so, you know, that's, that's what this month is all about is how do we encourage our community to invest in those kind of changes? That's cool. So are you doing other events, right? Obviously, mm -hmm. this is not your only event. Um, yeah. Where can people learn about the events? Is that just at the main website? That's zeitgeistarts.com if you live in Duluth? 
Yeah, that's a great place. I think the other place to look would be uh, to search for Bus Bike Walk Month on Facebook. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of promotion going on on Facebook and other social media around Bus Bike Walk. Um, you know, so there's group rides, there's uh, policy discussions, there's, uh, you know, all sorts of cool stuff happening all month. Good. Yay. Well, I'm so glad. And then your biggest, it seems to me like something that's connected everything you've done has been mm -hmm. getting people in their own cities involved. So what if somebody's never been involved? Like maybe they vote, but they haven't like, you know, done any get out the vote or they haven't like brought a concern to their city council. What's like a step, like what's the, the intro step that you would recommend to someone for getting involved in their community? Oh, you know, I think I might ask, um, I might send an email to your city councilors. And if you have a thought on an issue, you know, particularly say you care about these sort of mobility and transportation issues, um, you know, that, that we're exploring with Bus Bike Walk, share those opinions. And again, they can be as broad as you feel, you know, as educated as you are, as, as deep in understanding as you have. It's okay, wherever you're at, uh, share that opinion. And if you don't know others in your community that care about the same issues, ask your city councilors because they're probably hearing about it from others. Oh, and that's a good point. the good ones will know who else is working on those things in this in, in your community and, and they'll connect you to those people. And uh, it's a great way to kind of get engaged in in issues that you care about. Yeah, and, they, and if, even if they don't know a person to connect you, they might be able to direct you to the office that you could connect with that right. has the most influence in that area, right? Like, sure. Yeah. yeah. You could, you could get in contact with the city's planning department. Um, you know, sometimes communities have organized efforts the way that Zeitgeist uh, helps try and kind of create, you know, uh, a real shared understanding around these issues. Sometimes it might be, you know, the five other people that have also emailed city councilors frequently about that issue and you just get together for coffee or yeah. in today's times a zoom coffee and uh, <laughs> like this coffee you mean right, right. Um, that's yep. exactly right yep no that's and, a great suggestion yeah. and then yeah because that's the thing is i noticed i did a lot of advocacy around getting a mask ordinance passed and you mm -hmm. kind of forget that um you know i don't think most people do call their city councilors and you kind of start to realize that there really is it doesn't take that many people to contact a city councilor before they start looking at the issue. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. because it's not like everybody is sitting down every night at the dinner table, like calling their city councilor. So if you have mm -hmm. a real concern, bringing it up is a really powerful, like first step and often actually leads to change. I mean, depending on the size of your city, obviously, um, a bigger city might be harder, but there's probably more groups too, you know, around that's right. Issues. So that's right. There'll be more people to get to know, and and you know, not every, not every counselor is as good as others. So some will be better at that outreach and answering your questions. So I'd just say keep keep asking until you find someone who's willing to help you navigate towards others that that share those same concerns. Yeah. And have you voted yet? I have not voted yet. I we I haven't we, either. I have to mail it in this week. It's like ah. we're going to try and do it in person, but we may do it early. Uh, so, okay. Yeah. yeah. So obviously people should be voting. I know that Zeitgeist isn't a voting organization, but surely that is an easy way to make your voice heard too. Well, I mean, as I said, one of our three core values is that idea of inclusivity. And, um, you know, we, we can't have true civic inclusion unless everyone gets to sort of do their part in, in building our shared future and voting is the fundamental way of doing that. Yeah. Well, it is so cool to hear you. Anybody who wants to get involved who's in the Duluth area should go to Zeitgeist Arts or uh, look up Bus Bike Walk. I think it's Duluth Superior Bus Bike Walk Month or something like that yep. um, on Facebook. It's important in every city. I mean, even in New York City where there's great public transportation, um, sidewalks are still an issue. So really being mindful of how you're keeping up your sidewalk is an easy way to be a good citizen right i mean that's how i feel anyways i know it and you're absolutely right yeah oh well thank you so much for joining me today um i, I hope that your events all month go really well and if people want to learn more about how to get involved in duluth as i said make sure you look up zeitgeistarts.com so 
Cool. Well, Tony, I will hopefully see you in person or online again sometime soon. But thank you for taking time to hang out with me. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Have a great yes, show. Good luck. Thanks. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye. Cool. So I'm going to go back to Anne now. Um, and we're going to do some music and chalk art. Ooh, she's made some good progress in this time. Um, I don't know if she can hear me. I don't... Oh, it can. oh, you can. Okay, I was like... Actually, I have no idea. So I'm going to... Where are you at right now? You have the spaceman. He's looking yep. pretty pretty complete. And then is that a red dress in that lady? Yeah. Cool. Okay. Well, I'm, I am really excited to uh, play for you. Um, and then you can sketch while we play. And I think I will come back in and say bye to you so we can expand the screen to see what you've done. Is that cool? Okay, cool. Thanks, Anne, for doing this. I am going to get myself set up. I'm going to take myself out of the picture while I do that, actually. Everybody can watch Anne's beautiful art unfold. Okie doke. Um, I have you muted, and just so you know, so that in case some ambulances go by, <laughs> it doesn't interrupt the music. Um, but um, and then one last thing, can I press this back? Sweet. So, um, yep, perfect. Okay. So basically, Anne is doing an amazing job. She can do like three D arts. I am very uh, impressed. I saw her at an art festival in Two Harbors, Minnesota, and it was like by far the way coolest piece. Um, it was just so beautiful. So um, I'm hoping 
that she can explain her technique at the end of the show. But I'm going to start playing so that we get some music in. And if Tony's still around at the end, um, I'll bring him in too to say goodbye. If he's not, at least you guys got to meet him. He's one of the mentors, I would say, of my political engagement uh, life. So I'm glad that you got to meet him. So here we go. This is The Long Way Around. Oh, can I angle this out better? Hey, Paul. Water, or if it's applied with a brush, that's something we'll have to ask Anne afterwards because she can't talk. No, so here we go. When two souls meet and the whole world feels new, share moments sweet, all colors bright and true, and there is laughter and there are good things growing everywhere. And I'm happy to be in this place with you. And I'm happy to be in this place. You'll let it out, you'll lay it all across the table, what's this about? And you're making me unstable, and I don't want to go down this road. No, I don't want to go down this road. I want to go, but I can't, and I won't all learn to so up the rules that I broke open with you, cause I knew, and I 
chores and I don't feel at home in this world anymore. No, I don't feel at home in this world. We rain it in, and there is better understanding. Nobody wins if there is flight without the landing. And we learn to keep our hearts in time. Try not to burn the careful ties that bind us together. And I'm taking the long way around with you. And I'm taking the long way around. And I'm happy to be in this place with you. And I'm taking the long way around. I think I'm going to make, uh, that is the long way around. I think I'm going to make an adjustment on my audio because um, I heard there was some issues. And I think I know what it is, actually. Um, so one moment. This is that camera mic um, setting in the bottom. Wait a minute. There we go. Uh, nope. Camera mic down there with the little setting tab. Yep. Um, go to audio. Thank you. And then take out stereo audio. Okay, so we're going to see. And then if you could um, go back, like X that out. Thanks. I'm going to click on the black thing again. Okay, we're going to see if that works. I'm not really sure. Do you know what it is otherwise? No, that's not what it is. Yeah, I'm not really sure what the audio was about. Um, is it still sounding gargly now? Let me know. Check, check, check. Check. It seems to be working. Hmm, hello. Tell me if it's still weird. <laughs> Sorry about the audio. I think they made some setting updates on StreamYard this week, and so maybe... My computer does not know about them. Check, 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 check. Okay, it's better. Okay, um, I know the volume is a little low, but the problem is um, my mixer maxes out really easily. So I don't know how to fix that. But hopefully you'll just have to crank the volume for mine and that we will try to edit or like work around this for the next time. Actually, Paul, I have one last idea. Okay. I think the studio issue was, or the stereo sound was a problem. So one last thing, if you go down here, and then we'll get back to the, yep, all the way down, yep, wait till the settings pop up, kind of scroll all the way to the bottom of the page, there we go, oops, all the way where the clock is, there we go, click on that, um, click on the volume arrow over here, nope, not that one, just the arrow next to it, there we go, um, yeah, it's not letting me adjust the volume of that. So, okay, we'll just keep going. Um, click on the gray part. The gray, the gray part of volume. There we go. You can try turning the gain up as well. Click on it there once, please. Thanks. Okay, we're going to try another song. Um, maybe the overall gain. We're just going to see if this messes it up. <laughs> okay, so and anyway, so this week was a good week. We decided we are going to get that bunny I talked about. Um, we're going to get him on 
the 12th of October, so hopefully that will be awesome. Um, I'm a little nervous. I've never owned a bunny, so if anyone has, please put your bunny tips in the comments for us. Um, and I'm going to do my next song, which is Someday Will Linger in the Sun.
cool. Um, that is Someday We'll Linger in the Sun. I think I can turn uh, the gain up a little on my Taz cam, actually, Paul, um, to make it a little bit louder. Because a couple people said it was quiet. Um, that is the song I entered into the Tiny Desk contest back in 2016. Um, if you put it at like 1 o'clock, I guess it's usually at 2, but you also mess up the gain. So let's do 1. Maybe a little more, like a straight up one. Okay, you can keep going. I'm just going to test out the volume. A little bit more. Back to fine. Okay, cool. I think we hopefully have fixed the volume issue. Um, thank you for listening. I'm glad that you are all here, Chris and Sarah and Victoria and Raymond and Bartek and Aaron um, and Checho. I hope I didn't pronounce that wrong. And Larry. It's nice to see all of you here. Um, and it's lovely to see Anne's drawing coming around. Um, the next song I'm going to do is an instrumental one called Metsukukia. It is a Finnish traditional tune. Um, so I... I'm excited to see how that lines up with this beautiful drawing. And then we'll do the song that she was inspired by, Bound by a Thread, after that. So this is Metsukukia. Okay, we're good. Okay, I'm gonna start a run again. So. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okie dokie. That was Metsukukia. Um, Ranger Ron is a Finnish guy that lives up on the Iron Range, and he always likes to hear that song, so I'm glad he's here this week to tune in. Um, and I agree with everybody's comments. It's really cool to see this uh, chalk art unfold as I am doing these drawings. Um, it's pretty fun. So th you can see it really popping out to life. Shading is what makes her stuff so beautiful, um, especially just because and her use of color. It's just really fun to watch. So I'm going to do one more song for you today. Um, it's going to be Bound by a Thread, which is the one that Anne uh, Marie decided to base her drawing off of. And so, and then I'm going to check in really quick with Tony and and Marie and say goodbye to you all. And I will be back next week, um, but with a little different format. So um, is there something up? Oh, okay, I thought he was, I thought Paul was getting up to do something with the sound. Um, it's a little different format. So next week is a fundraiser for the Nora Project, which is a really, really cool organization that does um, education in elementary schools and middle schools about disability, but not just like basic anti-bullying. It really gets into disability rights and inclusion and how um, we can all be friends and how disability doesn't have to be something that we separate outside of society. So I really am truly invested in the work they're doing. So I'm letting them use my YouTube channel um, at two o'clock for a really fun event. I will be the headliner, but there's also an amazing comedian, Maysoon Zayed. She has cerebral palsy, but she's pretty famous. Like if you haven't heard Maysoon, look up her TED talk. Um, it has, it's like one of the most widely viewed TED talks of all time. Um, and then we're also gonna have a dancer um, named Gabriel Roderick. He goes by the name Freak. And also um, the other thing, the other person is Tina McKee, who's at every show. She's gonna be demonstrating her painting. So it will be um, really cool and um, on the same exact channel, same exact time. So in next week, I won't be, I mean, I'll be playing for you, but it won't be the same format. But I think it's really worthwhile um, to learn about what the Nora Project is doing. So I really encourage you, even if you normally come here for the normal live shows, I really encourage you to come to the Nora Project event. And I'll be in the chat um, talking with you all. So I'll still be there live at 2. Um, it'll just be a different program. And then I'll be back on the 18th with another special guest. And so... This is the last song um, of, the, of the evening, the afternoon, called Bound by a Thread. And then we're going to check back in with our guests. Um, I wasn't thinking of an astronaut when I wrote this song, but I guess I should have been, according to Anne-Marie, which is good. So here we go. Oh, whoops, that would not be what we want to hear. Here we go. Oh, somebody asked, who is that name of the artist, uh, the comedian with CP? Her name is Maysoon, M-A-Y-S-O-O-N, and then Zayed, Z-A-Y-I-D. And her uh, TED Talk, the title, I believe, is something like, I've got 99 problems, but CP is only one, or something like that. And it's, it's really funny and worthwhile. So uh, definitely check her out and hopefully tune in next Sunday, where you will get to hear her perform her comedian stuff, comedy, I guess is the correct word for that. So here we go. This is Bound by a Thread. Bound 
bound, bound by a thread Going down, down through the ages You could have stayed, but you came here instead To fill my life's empty pages It's really fun to do that song with the artwork because now I have a whole new meaning for that tune. So I'm going to take my violin out of my chair um, and come up and say goodbye to everybody. Um, bring in Tony, say hi to Anne, unmute her um, just so that we can say goodbye. And then I will be back. Um, October 11th, as I said, slightly different format, but maybe I can lose this a little bit. Um, but still a show, and it's actually going to be really cool, so please do not skip it. Perfect. Um, yay. So let me get my headphones in. Sorry, someday I'll have like a produced show where it doesn't look like I am scrambling at every moment possible, but we're not there yet. It's working. Um, okay, so there we go. Um, let me unmute Anne-Marie. Being unmuted. And add Tony oh. back in. Okay. <laughs> so we're all here. Can you hear me, everybody? Yes. 
Oh, wait. No, yeah. Can't. Actually, hold on. I know what I did. Could. No, I can hear you. Why can't I hear you, actually? Oh, I know why. <laughs> this is why some shows have producers, I guess. Uh, whatever. Here we go. Okay, I think now I can hear you. Are you there? I'm here. Yay, you're here, and Anne-Marie is here. getting her headphones in. And then at the end, the very end, I want you to give us a little tour of your beautiful artwork, Anne-Marie, because it's so cool. Um, okay, well, thank you both for being a part of this show. Um, Anne, you've got like, so many good comments on your beautiful art. They were pumped. Oh, I don't know if she can hear me. Okay, good. I was like, oh, I don't know. Now I can um, hear you. got a lot of beautiful comments on your artwork, so um, <laughs> you'll have to go back and look at them. And Tony, oh, thank, thank you. you for being a part of this show for the Duluth community and abroad, because a lot of people here are from all over the world, but the idea of community involvement and being a good citizen and pedestrian friendly, that's a global idea, huh? Mm -hmm. Indeed. Yeah. yeah, I think. Yeah, that's right. Well, and a lot, of, a lot of communities do it a lot better than we do, unfortunately. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, Duluth, is, it's 90,000 people approximately. Mm -hmm. And I feel like in some ways we have a beautiful arts community and there's a lot of cool stuff going on. But we have work to do in uh, disparity issues for sure, I would say. So it's good that you guys are doing the work that you are to kind of help fix some of these gaps, right? Mm -hmm. so, cool. Well, so people can find it on... Zeitgeistarts.com and um, I was going to try to make it pop up but I'm not skilled enough I guess so let me see I think I can do it <laughs> my computer skills are today. there we go <laughs> ooh look at that Zeitgeistarts.com so support Tony's ooh, uh, organization they really even. help make Duluth a better place and then i'm gonna put Anne's beautiful work if you want to support Anne, that's how you support Anne. so um tony i am gonna say goodbye to you so that Anne can give us a little tour of her piece before the end of the show but thank you for making time for us and hanging out with us thanks so much everyone go support galen on patreon and uh make sure she can keep doing this amazing work that she does really fun so uh, i mm -hmm. second that yes. every <laughs> helps. so thank you for right. mentioning that i always forget to say that so sure. have a good day okay tony you and too good luck with the week with the month actually the whole month of events thank so, you talk yeah. to you soon well, take care bye 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 um, so, oh, <laughs> i'm so bad at this hi ann how are you so people asked a <laughs> lot of questions um before I we could. have to go about how you do your work like, um, is it a paintbrush? I think oh. Steve kind of tried to answer um, in the comments. But how do you do your work? I guess I didn't even get into that. Um, well, mostly I'm using artist pastels. And um, when you saw me using the paintbrush, that was just water on a paintbrush. And it is good for blending. Unfortunately, I realized it's 20, 30 degrees cooler oh, in yeah, this area than it is in the sun. So it, the water oh, didn't actually weird. evaporate yeah, as quickly as it normally usually does. In the summer, huh? <laughs> so, <laughs> usually, yeah, usually I paint like uh, Glensheen. I did a painting there where I, with water, where it yeah, was not evaporating as I was putting it on. What is it today? Like it 45 or 50 degrees? It's pretty chilly. <laughs> what? I don't know. It was 27 when I woke up and I was like, no. ah, I'm going to be talking oh in the God. basement. <laughs> well, that's terrible. So, um,. But. Can you give us a little tour of your painting? I'm going to take myself out of the picture for a minute so people can really see it up close. Sure. Let's see. Here, I'll use a pointer. <laughs> okay, so, whoa. So um, this is the open book of your life that's got pages that need filling. And um, this is actually based on a, a pre-Raphaelite painting. Um, it's... Uh, one of the series from well, the poems by Keats about the woman without mercy and how she's torturing this knight. But I changed the knight into a spaceman because we're doing the future and we're going down through the ages. So we have a princess from probably the Middle Ages and a knight who's become a spaceman. And she is pulling him in for a kiss with her long, long hair. And um, 
the idea of connected by a thread, my first thought when I thought of the future and being connected by a thread was, of course, an oxygen tank, because spacemen always have these wonderful umbilical cord-like structures on them in futuristic sci-fi things. And um, that plus the hair, I thought, just really captured the fragility of that wonderful connection. And, Whoa, yeah. oh my gosh. That is so beautiful. People are really <laughs> enthralled with the 3D nature of your work. Oh. So that is really cool. And Thanks. A, it has a connection to art history. I didn't. Do you know a lot about art history then, too? A little bit. Enough to know that like, if you want it to be beautiful and romantic, then look at pre-Raphaelite stuff from the 1800s. And, okay, you know, good to know. Things like uh, that. I'll Google Although I think that. most of my stuff usually comes from impressionistic pictures if you're going <laughs> to do chalk art. Wow. Well, yeah, I suppose that's probably the best way to really convey something, right? Yeah. Um, not have it have to be so detailed. I'm just letting you know that I did a chalk festival with in the same realm as Anne, and mine looked like a two-year-old drew it. And then oh. hers are just like, and I think you're right that anyone can learn, and you don't have to tell yourself you're bad. But I always have a lot of respect for when people are so uh, gifted with making things pop out like that. So cool. Um, so fun. Um, well, thank you, Anne, for being a part of this show. Um, I'm really grateful that people got to see your work. And um, Thank people, you. I appreciate it. Yeah, no, it's so fun. Um, if people enjoyed this show, please support this work um, on PayPal. There's a PayPal address on the bottom. Um, also, Venmo. Um, I'm going to split the tips this week with Anne, and then hopefully you, you guys can donate to Zeitgeist on your own because they're kind of a non-profit deal. Um, but I, I want to support Anne's work. And then also, as Tony said, uh, Patreon is how I keep going um, myself right now, especially. And then Anne Marie, one last website is right here, a genius. Because she is. She's a genius. So that's yeah. the whole yeah. point. Yeah. Well, I hope you have a great week. And I hope to do more stuff with you down the line. This was really fun. This was fun. Yeah. Maybe I mean, longer than an hour, but yeah. <laughs> I know. I was like, uh-oh. What if it took five hours? We're not sure. Um, people just loved your work. So please go check out the comments when you're done. Because somebody even said pre-Raphaelite. Woohoo. So they must have known what that was. So good for them. Because <laughs> I <laughs> do not. But I'm going to Google it when I get off of this meeting. So, um, well, take care of yourself. Stay safe. You have too. Have a good week. And thank you, everybody, for coming and making this a really fun afternoon. See you later, Anne. Bye. Bye. See ya. Bye. Say hi to Steve, too, by the way. Well. Yeah. Bye. Oops, I'm so bad at this. Okay.